congregants gathered for the Sabbath. This is the most horrific crime scene I've seen in 22 years with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A horrific attack motivated by bigotry and anti-Semitism. The mayor of Pittsburgh will be here. Plus, terror by mail. An accused bomber charged with terrorizing people whom the president has criticized. President Trump blames the media. Unfair coverage, deep hostility, and negative attacks. Should he turn down his harsh rhetoric? We'll talk to one of the bomber's targets, Democratic donor Tom Steyer, and the president's former communications director, Anthony Scaramucci. And consumed by violence, a week of horrible, hate-fueled attacks. As the country approaches a critical election, can the nation's political leaders help us heal? Hello, I'm Dick Tapper in Washington, where the state of our union is, frankly, devastated. Eleven innocent people were brutally murdered Saturday when an anti-Semitic gunman opened fire inside a Pittsburgh synagogue, turning a peaceful place of worship and hope into a crime scene of death and destruction. The gunman, armed with an assault weapon and at least three handguns, stormed the sanctuary, shouting anti-Semitic slurs. Two police officers and two SWAT officers were wounded in the confrontation. One FBI officer uh, one FBI official calls it, quote, the most horrific crime scene he's ever seen. Today, the alleged gunman is in custody and facing 29 federal charges, including hate crimes. On Saturday, President Trump denounced anti-Semitism and called for the death penalty for the shooter. This evil anti-Semitic attack is an assault on all of us. It's an assault on humanity. It will require all of us working together to extract the hateful poison of anti-Semitism from our world. The brutal slaughter in Pittsburgh ends what's been a hate-filled week in the United States of America. A mail bomber terrorized former presidents and others whom President Trump has singled out for criticism, and a shooter targeted and murdered two African Americans in Kentucky after failing to storm a largely African American church. All of this in the days before what's been described as likely, as the, likely the deadliest attack on Jews in the history of the United States. CNN's Jessica Dean joins me now from Pittsburgh, where officials are about to brief uh, reporters. And Jessica, this massacre happened about 24 hours ago. What are we expecting to hear at this news conference any minute now? Yeah, any minute now, Jake. In fact, right now they are announcing who's going to be speaking at this news conference. We are expecting to hear the identities of the 11 victims. And we know from the criminal complaint that eight of those were male, three of them female. Uh, so we're expecting to learn more about that, plus the supporting affidavit. So we're going to get some more details about what happened yesterday. But we do know that criminal charges have been filed against the alleged shooter in this 29 counts. These are hate crimes that he has been charged with. Uh, so we are expecting to hear more about all of that. Again, we're going to hear from the U.S. attorney. We're going to hear from the special agent in charge of this FBI investigation. Uh, and we are hoping to hear from them very soon. In the meantime, we were in Squirrel Hill, that neighborhood where the shooting happened yesterday. And we were there for a vigil uh, when the entire community came outside and gathered around. They are bracing to hear these names, many of them going to be personally affected. So again, we're expecting to hear from them any moment now. We're going to bring that to you as soon as we can, Jake. All right, Jessica Dean, thanks so much. And as soon as they start that press conference, we will bring it to you live. But until then, here with me in studio is Congressman Adam Schiff, Democrat of California. He's the ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee. He's been outspoken about rising anti-Semitism uh, around the world. You also happen to be Jewish, I should point out, uh, as am I. Um, you're the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Have you been briefed on this shooting? And what can you tell us uh, about motive beyond the obvious that this was an anti-Semite filled with rage based on his social media posts. I've had only preliminary briefings and I don't have that much to add beyond what the public already knows. Uh, I think clearly these were uh, acts of hate motivated by anti-Semitism. Uh, certainly the social media posts are probably the best window into where this shooter was coming from and their bile filled and their uh, frequent references to uh, anti-Semitic anti slurs and uh, different tropes about Jews and Jewish complicity as this uh, shooter and his bigoted mind saw it in bringing people invaders into the country. Uh, so uh, it certainly looks like his motivation is pretty clear. Um, the president condemned the shooting and he condemned anti-Semitism uh, in stark terms at an event in Indianapolis yesterday. Um, 
How do you feel about how the president has handled uh, this specific tragedy? Are, are you satisfied? Has he done what he needs to do? You know, the problem is not how he is handling the aftermath, uh, although I certainly don't agree with his suggestion that this could have been avoided or mitigated if they'd had uh, someone armed in the synagogue. That's not the answer. Um, the broader issue is what kind of cri uh, climate are we creating in the country? Uh, this country is filled with amazing, beautiful, wonderful people who came here, many of them um, attracted by the idea this was a land of opportunity no matter your religion, your ethnic origin, your color. That idea is being tested uh, by those who are preaching hatred and division, um, and we have to overcome that. Uh, and I think the president has a pivotal role there. No one sets the tone more than the president of the United States. Uh, and the tone that he sets is one of division, often one of hatred, uh, sometimes one of incitement of violence against journalists. Uh, and there's no escaping our collective responsibility, but there's no escaping the tone that he sets uh, for the country. The con Constitution contemplates a president that tries to make us a more perfect union. And the president has his own constitution in here um, that doesn't allow him to do that. And that's not going to change. I think it's going to fall on all the rest of us uh, to try to make this a more perfect union, to bring people together, to accentuate our common humanity and not these uh, ancient uh, hatreds and uh, not uh, giving birth to new hatreds uh, that's going to fall on all of us and I, I think we're up to the challenge uh, now that's a that's a general criticism of President Trump when it comes to the specifics of this anti-semite the shooter uh, his social media posts indicated that he was not a Trump supporter he thought Trump was controlled by kikes uh, a derogatory term for Jews that, that he was too controlled by Jews that he wasn't legit and as long as the United States was infested with kikes, he wrote. Um, MAGA would never happen. So the president had pointed to that and said, this guy was not a supporter of mine. You know, none of these acts of hatred are going to be identical. Uh, you had, uh, as you pointed out, someone go uh, attempt to get into an African-American church, shoot people and shot two African-Americans in the store instead. Uh, you had these bombs that were sent around to the president's critics and opponents. Uh, and you had someone uh, who went into this synagogue uh, filled with the idea that Jews were behind this caravan, uh, something that um, has been pushed out in social media. Um, and, and so you're never going to find all of these are exactly the same. But nonetheless, what is the same is, are we part of the solution? Are we part of trying to make us a more perfect union? Are we trying to accentuate what, what brings us together, what unites us? Or are we preaching hatred and division? And honestly, I think this president's whole modus operandi uh, is to divide us. Uh, he gets up in the morning with new and inventive ways to divide us. And it's not enough that on the day of a tragedy, he says the right words. If every other day of the year, he's saying things to bring us uh, uh, into conflict with each other. Uh, George Soros uh, is a, a billionaire financier. Uh, he's Jewish. He's a funder of a lot of progressive causes, um, somebody who's in the political arena certainly, um, you know, opens themselves up to criticism. Do you think all the criticism coming from the right about George Soros, all of it is anti-Semitic? Some of it? Well, how do you view it? Uh, well, I don't know that I could say all of it. Uh, some may have, a, uh, have an issue with George Soros' uh, Open Society Organization or Foundation. But I think much of it, most of it. Uh, we have to go to the press conference. We'll come back to you, yes. Congressman Show. <laughs> Sessions and the entire family of the United States Department of Justice, we want to offer our most heartfelt condolences and prayers to the victims of yesterday's senseless acts of hatred and violence, to the families and friends, and to Pittsburgh's Jewish community, and to the larger community of Pittsburgh. The Jewish community of Pittsburgh is one that we as Pittsburghers treasure. It's an important part of the cultural and social identity of Pittsburgh, and so this was an attack upon our neighbors and upon our friends and one that we felt very deeply. The fact that this attack took place during a worship service makes it even more heinous. A place of worship is a sacred place. It's a place of peace and a place of grace. It's a place where a community comes together to celebrate that that they hold most dear and most sacred. And this, of course, is our first freedom as a people. So today all over Pennsylvania, men and women in similar places of worship are in prayer for our Jewish brothers and sisters. 
So today we stand together as a community, a community that rejects hatred and violence, a community where neighbors respect neighbors, where we embrace our religious diversity and we celebrate our differences. And together we mourn those whose lives were lost and we begin the healing process. I want to commend the courageous police officers and SWAT teams who responded to the scene. They are truly heroes who without hesitation, without concern for their own safety, ran toward gunfire to protect innocent victims. By confronting and neutralizing Bowers, they pre prevented additional loss of life. So a word about the charges. Last night, my office filed federal charges against the defendant, Robert Bowers. The complaint alleges that on Saturday, October 27th, at approximately 9.50 a.m., Robert Bowers entered the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh Squirrel Hill neighborhood. At that time, members of the Tree of Life Synagogue were engaged in religious services and worship. Bowers was armed with multiple weapons. He had three Glock 357 handguns and an AR-15 assault rifle. Inside the synagogue, Bowers shot and killed 11 individuals and wounded two others. Police officers and SWAT teams responded quickly to the scene and Bowers shot at them. Ultimately, four police officers were injured and three of them were shot by Bowers. During the course of his deadly assault on the people of the synagogue, Bowers made statements regarding genocide and his desire to kill Jewish people. After a standoff with police, Bowers eventually surrendered and remains in federal custody today. So our complaint charges Bowers with 29 separate federal crimes. There are 11 counts of murdering victims who are exercising their religious beliefs. There are 11 counts of using a firearm to commit murder, and each of these counts is punishable by death. The final seven counts are based upon the harm inflicted by Bowers upon the brave police officers who, in trying to stop Bowers' rampage, put their own lives in danger. Three of these brave men were shot by Bowers. So Bowers is scheduled to make his initial appearance before a federal magistrate judge on Monday, October 29th at 1.30 p.m. So moving forward, the investigation is underway and our work will continue. Know that we will spare no effort or resource in ensuring that the defendant is held fully accountable for his unspeakable and hateful crimes. We would ask the public and the media to have patience with us as we conduct this investigation and understand that there are things that we cannot share at times during the course of the investigation. At the conclusion of our, of our remarks, we'll be happy to take questions. Now you'll hear from Special Agent in Charge of the Pittsburgh Field Bureau, uh, Robert Jones. Thank you, Scott. Last night at approximately 9 p.m., Robert Bowers was formally taken into federal custody following the issuance of an arrest warrant by a federal magistrate judge here in the Western District of Pennsylvania. He's presently still in the hospital following surgery and under guard. At this point, we have nothing to indicate that Bowers had accomplices, uh, but again, we are in the early stages of this investigation. Our hearts continue to go out to the families of the victims of the Jewish community here in Pittsburgh last evening after some difficult work by the medical examiner's office. All 11 victims were positively identified and next of kin notification took place. As of 6 a.m. this morning, all of the victims had been taken from the education center to the medical examiner's office. I want to personally thank the leadership of the Jewish Community Center and the rabbis of the three congregations located at the facility for their patience and the patience of the families as we work through the night to identify uh, and remove the victims this morning. This is a large, complex crime scene and much work remains to be done. At present, FBI evidence teams from Baltimore, Washington, and Newark are here to augment Pittsburgh, and we estimate that the crime scene may take up to a week to process. As reported already, we've conducted a search at the subject's house in Baldwin, and a search of his vehicle will take place this morning. I can't comment on what was found in those searches. We continue to conduct interviews, scrub social media, review possible surveillance camera video, and exploit digital media to determine how and why Bowers committed this terrible act. I ask again that if you have information that may help, please contact law enforcement. 
I'd like again to thank Chief Schubert of the Pittsburgh Police for the heroic actions of his officers. Had Bowers made it out of that facility, there is a strong possibility that additional violence would have occurred. I also want to thank Wendell Hisrick and his team. They are a big part of the community that all law enforcement promises to protect and serve. Thank you very much. I'll turn it over to Wendell. Good morning. I would just like to take a few minutes and thank the outpouring of support that we've received over the last 24 hours. The Jewish Community Center, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the various grief counselors, the Children's Institute, and the many other organizations and businesses that have provided food and logistics for, for the officers and for the victims. As Mr. Jones mentioned, the area around Wilkins and Shady will remain closed so that the forensic investigation of the crime scene can continue. That area will probably remain closed for up to a week. Extra patrols have been assigned around various sensitive locations throughout the city of Pittsburgh to include where the uh, scheduled event will occur tonight. In the next few minutes, uh, the medical examiner will release the names of the deceased victims. I would personally ask that the media respect the privacy of the families of these victims. I was there last night and witnessed the notifications being made to the families. It is a very difficult time for the families, and I ask you to give them some distance. Finally, if you see a first responder, whether it be a police officer, paramedic, or firefighter, go up to them and say thank you for their work that they've done. The last 24 hours has been extremely stressful for them, and a word of thanks would go a long way. At this time, I turn it over to Pittsburgh Bureau of Police Chief Scott Schubert, who will give you an update on his officers. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first and foremost, as, as everybody's saying, our uh, heartfelt uh, condolences to the victims and to their families and their friends. And we have a, a, a strong relationship with the Jewish community in Pittsburgh. And I just want to tell them that we grieve with you, we support you, and we're here for you. We will continue to work with you. Uh, this is a tragic uh, thing for everybody. And, but it's something that makes Pittsburgh strong is that we work together. So we're going to continue to do that. Uh, I, I still want to praise the officers for what they did. Uh, I mean, they ran into danger. They ran into gunfire to help others. Uh, some of that's training. Some of that's experience. But it's their inner core that wants them to help others, that wants to save lives. And they did that yesterday. So we want to praise them for that. Uh, the four officers that were injured. One was released yesterday. Uh, we're praying one will be released today. And then the uh, other two have a little bit more that, that needs to be done. And can't say enough for the, the medical staff at the hospitals for what they're doing for the officers. Uh, we have incredible hospitals in Pittsburgh. And uh, they're, they're doing a, a fantastic job uh, with that. Uh, can't say enough for the interagency and interagency support. Uh, Western Pennsylvania is blessed to have so many uh, law enforcement agencies that work together, that train together. Uh, and yesterday just showed how that works. City, county, state, federal agencies working together, no egos, working together for what's right. And uh, I can't thank them enough for that. Uh, and just, uh, we're gonna get through this and uh, we're going to continue on and show what Pittsburgh's made of. So thank you. Good morning. I'm uh, Dr. Carl Williams. I'm the medical examiner, chief medical examiner of uh, Allegheny County. And again, I want to reiterate what everybody said so far, which is we in my office extend our deepest sympathies and condolences to the families. I met with them last night during the process of identification and there's no words to express uh, uh, the, the, uh, um, the, the sympathy that they need. Yesterday evening at the uh, um, 
uh, synagogue. We uh, uh, entered the synagogue and identified all 11 victims uh, uh, before they were removed uh, and brought from the synagogue last night to my office. Uh, uh, we've been involved with uh, four rabbis uh, from the synagogue and elsewhere. Uh, they can have a continued presence uh, at my office uh, during the process. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you the names of the victims now, and these will be available to you uh, afterwards. 75-year-old uh, Joyce Feinberg of Oakland, 65-year-old uh, uh, Richard Gottfried of Ross Township, 97-year-old Rose Mallinger of Squirrel Hill, 66-year-old Jerry Rabinowitz of Edgewood, 59-year-old uh, Cecil Rosenthal of Squirrel Hill, 54-year-old uh, um, David uh, uh, Rosenthal, uh, David uh, and Cecil Rosenthal were brothers, 84-year-old uh, Bernice Simon of Wilkinsburg, 86-year-old Sylvan Simon of Wilkinsburg, Bernice and Sylvan were husband and wife. 71-year-old Daniel Stein of Squirrel Hill, 88-year-old Melvin Wax of Squirrel Hill, and 69-year-old Irving Youngner of Mount Washington. Uh, the bodies are currently uh, at the medical examiner's office. Autopsies have begun on those. Uh, we are um, um, uh, doing everything in our power to complete the process in a way that honors both civil and religious law uh, and um, uh, Cause and manner will be released to, uh, to the media as they're uh, determined. Uh, we have not established a time framework for this. We're only in the initial process of evaluating what will be required to do that. Uh, uh, and finally, in talking with the families uh, last night, they are in shock and grieving, as you can imagine. My colleagues and I joined the authorities in asking for you, please, to be respectful of uh, the uh, needs of, for the time and space as they deal with this tragedy. Uh, today, in the coming weeks, they will need to know that Pittsburgh uh, supports them and is uh, lifting them up. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jeff Finkelstein. I'm the president and CEO of the Jewish Federation of Greater Pittsburgh. Um, so I have to begin by saying that I've seen this room a lot of times on TV, and I never thought I'd be at this podium. Um, this is an awful, awful period for our Jewish community, and uh, and especially for the families who've been affected. And it's real when once you hear the names. We're going to do everything we can to help the families. Uh, we're in the process of doing that now, and we'll be there for them and uh, be there to help our Jewish community in the Pittsburgh region uh, heal from this. I want to echo a lot of the thanks and gratitude that people have already expressed to local law enforcement, uh, to the FBI, um, to the DHS, the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, who've all been there with us yesterday at the JCC. I want to thank my colleagues at the Jewish Community Center and Jewish Family and Children's Service especially for really stepping in to work with, uh, with the families. Um, and, um, and, you know, we will, we will definitely get, uh, we'll get past this and be a strong Jewish community like we've always been. Thank you. I'm going to ask the mayor to come up now. Thanks, Jeff. <coughs> Pittsburgh's a strong town. We are a resilient city. Uh, we have been knocked down, and we've found ways to stand back up. And we've always done it in one way, by working together. To the victims' families, to the victims' friends, we are here as a community of one for you. We will be here to help you through this horrific episode. We'll get through this darkest day of Pittsburgh's history by working together. Squirrel Hill is the most diverse neighborhood in all of Western Pennsylvania. People choose to live there because of the diversity of the community. The Jewish community is the backbone. It is part of the fabric of Pittsburgh. And we will be there in all communities to support our friends in the Jewish community. We. Um, as I stated, have been knocked down before, but we've always been able to stand back up because we work together. 
And I have to take a moment to thank those that spoke earlier. The effort that was put in across multi-jurisdictions, from the federal to the state to the county to the local, was something that we should all be proud of. The fact that we were able to work together as one community, suburban medics coming in voluntarily to take on different areas of our city because all of our medics were at the scene. Our medics deciding on their day off to voluntarily come in to fill seven additional ambulances to back up our officers and the officers who came from our surrounding counties. The federal agents and the state troopers and the county officers all working together in order to be able to make sure an episode that will forever go down in the history of this city is one of the worst moments that we have experienced was able to be lessened because of that coordination. And to those that are standing behind me who spoke early, earlier, the professionalism that was exemplified through their leadership was something that we needed at our darkest time. To our officers who are in the hospital and to the one officer who has been discharged, the thanks of an entire city go to them. Their sacrifice and their knowing of the danger that they put themselves in in order to be able to protect others is something when they put on that uniform that we should understand the sacrifice that they make. And to their family members, this city will be behind and there to support you in anything that you may need. And finally, to those that are not familiar with Pittsburgh, to those who have given uh, their words of not only confidence but support to Pittsburgh from around the world, around this nation, and around this state. Thank you. We know that we as a society are better than this. We know that hatred will never win out. That those that try to divide us because of the way that we pray or where our families are from around the world will lose. And in Pittsburgh, we're pragmatic and we find solutions to problems. We will not try to rationalize irrational behavior. We will not try to figure out ways in order to lessen the degree of crimes such as this. We will work to eradicate it. We will work to eradicate it from our city, from our nation, and our world. Hatred will not have a place anywhere. And we will work locally to make those changes happen and we will work with partners around this country and around this world to make sure that it ends. I want to thank again all of those in this room, the elected officials who are gathered, those that have worked on the front line of public safety, those that worked within public works and other parts of government in order to be able to assure the safety of our people. And we'll open it up to questions at this time. Yes, officer injured. Three ranger by the suspect. I think it's either flying glass or a bullet fragment that ricocheted off something. Yes. Is there any indication that the alleged shooter had paced out the synagogue or had any familiarity with it before Saturday? We don't have any information on that at this point. Was the weapon used in the shooting the AR-15? No, that all uh, all the weapons he brought into the facility with him were were used. Scott, a lot of people have asked that this is a case of domestic terrorism. Can you speak to that? We are treating this as a, as a hate crime. Uh, as Special Agent in Charge Jones said, there's no indication that uh, he's working with anyone else. And so we have charged it and are treating it as, as a hate crime, but continue to investigate. And, and just to elaborate, the distinction of domestic terrorism would need to involve what? The distinction between a hate crime and domestic terrorism is uh, hate crime is where an individual is animated by a hatred or a certain animus toward a person of a uh, certain ethnicity or religious faith, and it, it becomes domestic terrorism where there is an ideology that that person is then also trying to propagate through violence. And so we continue to see where that line is, but for now, uh, at this place in our investigation, we're, we're treating it as a hate crime and charging it as such. He had three Glock, three Glock handguns with him. 
the first two officers who confronted the suspect, could you clarify where that occurred? Was it outside the building? And have you determined whether or not the shooting inside had, uh, he had done the shooting he was going to do, or there was potential for more shooting outside? From what we know at this point, I know that he was exiting the building. I'm not sure if it was in the doorway or just inside or just outside. Now, your second question again? Was whether or not there was an idea that he had, that the shooting he had done inside was, you know, he had concluded that? Or it, it appears at this point that he had finished and he was exiting the building. And there was some reference to the possibility of additional shooting. Is that the idea that he had more ammunition? He's going somewhere else? We, we don't know of any plans to conduct uh, additional shootings. My comments were meant in this fashion. There would have been a violent encounter probably uh, as he left at some point. That's what, that's what I mean by uh, additional uh, acts of violence. What's the estimate on how many people were inside the synagogue at the time, and did anyone try to fight that? I don't know that at this time. Do you know what was going on inside the synagogue at the time, what kind of ceremony or uh, I actually don't know the specifics. There are three um, congregations that meet in the same building, so um, I'm assuming all three were, were holding services, but but I actually don't know for sure. And do we know which community? Is this one specific congregation? I, no, I think they come from, I think they actually, from what I know, they come from all three. So you moved throughout the building because they were holding services in different places in the temple, right? I don't know this motivation of where he moved and why, but um, uh, as has been said, he, he moved through the building and there were three separate congregations conducting services at the same time. Yes. How long is this last? How long between the time he entered and the time he placed engagement outside? We're, we're estimating at this point uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, but we don't know that for sure. That's 20 minutes period between the, the police shootout and the initial attack, or 20 minutes for the initial attack. All I can tell you at this point is that the initial shots fired uh, comments were 945. We know that, um, um, that the EMS call went out at 954 and that the officer engaged him at some point after that. So that's a, that's a very rough estimate at this point. So I, I don't know why he picked this particular synagogue. Are you elaborating at all on the alleged shooter's condition at this point? Do you know? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Still, uh, he remains in fair condition at Allegheny General Hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. Will the families be able to bury the head within 24 hours, which is required by the Jewish law, or will the investigation delay that? We have. Uh, representatives, rabbis at the office. We're doing everything we can to balance, as I say, what we need to do as a criminal investigation with the needs of the family. So uh, they're, we're just in the initial stages of processing the bodies and knowing we will make sure we can do everything we can to make sure that we can release the bodies in the shortest possible time frame, making sure that we get the information we need to carry on the criminal investigation. Today, no. We hope to release the bodies. Some of the bodies will be released today. How many? I'm not sure. Were shots fired at all three services? And do you have any handle on how many shots in all were fired? Uh, lots of shots were fired. There were casings everywhere, but, but no. Were they in all three services, the three different services? Uh, I'll have to refer to the investigation that's going on. There were different activities going on in different parts of the, of the building, so yes. Are investigators looking at any surveillance footage that may have been inside the synagogue? Pardon me? Sorry, any uh, surveillance footage that's being reviewed right now? We're attempting to see if there were uh, surveillance cameras in position where we could capture footage, but we'll look at uh, the neighborhood and try to find uh, everything we can. Robert, was there anyone uh, armed inside who may have tried to find the government? I have no information that that happened. From what he said, were the, were, were the most of the shots fired within common areas, or did he actually go into uh, chapel sanctuaries? All we can tell you right now is that there were three different locations inside the facility where we found deceased victims. Do we know how he obtained his firearms and purchased them? I, do, I don't. I personally don't have that information right now, but we're working closely with our ATF partners, and I think we Mr. have that. Mr. Mack, can I ask you a question? Mr. Mack, yes. in learning a lesson from this appalling tragedy, is it not time for the political classes to get together and talk about getting the gun out of American society? I've, I've heard the President's comments of um, how we should arm guards 
in our synagogues, um, our churches, our mosques. Uh, I've heard the conversation over the past year about how we should arm um, security guards in our schools. We're dealing with irrational behavior. There is no way that you can rationalize a person walking into a synagogue during services and taking the lives of 11 people. We shouldn't be trying to find ways to minimize the dangers that occur from irrational behavior. We should be working to eliminate irrational behavior in the empowerment of people who would seek to cause this type of carnage from continuing. I think the approach that we need to be looking at is how we take the guns, which is the common denominator of every mass shooting in America, out of the hands of those that are looking to express hatred through murder. Last question. Mr. Mayor. Question period. What do you think of the international attention that you're getting? And how do you think the, uh, it's going to affect the election? I have no idea how it affects elections, but I will say this, that the outpouring of love and support for Pittsburgh is incredibly appreciated during this time. And there is a commonality throughout the world of people who have had enough of this type of hate based upon somebody's practice of religion or somebody's national origin. There is a outpouring that is being heard through the people of Pittsburgh right now of where people want to see society move towards. And it is not about finding ways to divide us. It is about finding ways that unite us through our commonality as humans. Let this horrific episode be another mark in the march of humanity towards recognizing that we are all one. Thank you. All right, as the press.